I want to show you um, our use of a number of tools that you can use in your classroom to teach computational thinking and programming. And I've got a number here. Oh, we've got Bbots, we've got Sphero. Sphero is uh, a little, um, a Sphero is a robot inside a ball. So inside the Perspex ball is a robot and that robot um, has the capacity to move at different speeds in different directions um, and do a certain number of things as well as change colour and uh, they're quite sturdy and robust. Um, one thing that I often tell people is that because they are waterproof it adds to their versatility. So I have used Spheros in task where I've asked students to use them as a motor for a boat. So they build a boat, they use these for a motor, so the boat must have a coupling that the Sphero will sit in and the, the robot inside will turn the um, Perspex cover and cause the boat to move in the water. As well as that, we can use them with paint in art. So I've asked students to use their Sphero as a mixer. So I've asked them to put a pile of blue paint, a pile of yellow paint and a pile of red paint, the three primary colours. And then I've asked them to program their Sphero to create orange, for example. So they would m program their Sphero to move to yellow and move through the yellow and do some circles and then come and move through the red and go back to the same spot and do some circles and make orange. Not always the most successful, but it's always a really interesting um, piece of art that the, cre the students create and it demonstrates their understanding of the primary colours in art. As well as that, it demonstrates their ability to program accurately and command their Sphero to go to particular places in a repeated manner. Sphero comes with a, a wireless charger and the bottom of the robot inside has the charging element which will sit on the cradle and charge. It's quite simple. To program the, the Sphero, we do need uh, another device an iPad or an Android device. We use iPads and on the iPad we use the program for Spheros, the, um, the program or the app called Spiro Edu. Where is it? Using Spiro Edu it's a quite simple process to connect to the Sphero by touching connect and you can see by the light that the Sphero is connected. We can then go down to the bottom and there's a number of options. One, there is an option where students can steer the Sphero around they can change the colour of the sphere, the, the light on the Sphero. Let me put it in a position where you can see it. And they can change the speed and the, the intensity of the light. So they can drive it around using just controls. And often I do this just to engage students uh, and to give them a bit of a skill test. But this is not um, a, a method of of programming or computational thinking. Around here, down here, there's the option for programs. Now programs can, you can create a new program or you can open an existing program. And the program is, uses block, block programming, 
which is um, a recognised language, programming language, and using the blocks on the block programming, you can set the heading, the degrees, so we can start talking about 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees, um, and we can start talking about things like 45 degrees, 135 degrees, etc. So we can select the angle that we want the sphero to roll at. We can select the speed that the sphero can roll at. Now this is an interesting concept. It has a maximum speed of 255, but there are no units. We don't know what the 255 is, or the 100. It's not 100%, 100% 100 is 255. So we can actually take that ambiguity and use it as a mathematics activity where we ask the students to mark out a distance on the floor, a known distance, use a stopwatch and measure the speed that the Sphero travels um, between those two points at 100, at 150, at 200 and 250, and actually give real world measurements to these variables in meters per second. So that is a, an option. So I'm gonna set the speed to 255, and we can set the duration, the time that the um, Sphero will move for. Now at 255, whatever they are, I'm assuming that it will travel quite quickly. So we only want it to travel for, say, five seconds across the floor. Press tick. I can then, if we can see there, it says add a sound of a chicken and uh, speak. Oh, I want to get rid of that. So the nature of block programming is that we should be able to drag them away and put them in the bin when we don't want them. Drag them away and put them in the bin. Now down the bottom here are a number of options. I can click on movement and I can see that I want to make the Sphero spin. Now I want it to spin um, 90 degrees and I want it to spin for three seconds. Okay, then all we need to do is press the start button and watch to see what the Sphero does. Now, now also importantly, up here I have the aim button, which allows me, if I can show you the Sphero at the same time, It allows me to move that little light on the Sphero, which is a tail light. So that, if I set that up now, forward for the Sphero is away from the camera. Now if I press start, it travelled 135 degrees, so it's going to turn and travel for five seconds away from our view. Now I've started it further over in the corner and five seconds is far too long. So I go, I go back into the five seconds, I change that to one second. I can change the speed to 105, whatever it is. Okay, now the aim should remain the same so that forward is away from the camera. So when I press 135 degrees, it should still turn and come in this direction.
played the sound of the chicken. And then has finished the process. So that is block programming at, a, at its simplest using Spheros. Now, Spheros also have a lot of other analytics. So I can see a graph, a location graph, and I can start talking about this in maths that the Sphero turned and moved and its actual, um, its actual velocity or location map has been calculated. I can then also go to an orientation, so it moved a certain number of degrees, your roll and pitch. Um, these are terms that refer to things like um, flight in aeroplanes. I can see the roll, and this is continuing, so the, the, little, the gyroscope, the, the bit that it changed earlier, let's see it again. We'll go start, and you can see that it's in real time, that it calculates the movement of the Sphero. And then if it sits still, eventually the pitch, roll, and yaw all disappear. Um, I can also see the accelerometer, the velocity, and the distance. And I can talk to students about each of these different things and demonstrate each of these different things using our simple programming in the Sphero.